All right, folks, Pitching Ace 88, we are back playing Criminal Case on Facebook. Let's take a book. All right, folks, Pitching Ace 88, we are back playing Criminal Case on Facebook. Now, I apologize for the stream if you guys were with me. I tried for about an hour to get this thing to work. Um, and OBS failed me uh, when I logged in today, as well as I tried three other uh, software and they would not capture a browser. So I'm going to try. Um, again, I can keep trying, but it's not up. Hopefully next week uh, I'll have something for you guys. And I'm, I'll be able to get this stuff, I think, out as quickly as possible. Hey Ace, I know your, your return to Grimsboro has been difficult with your ex-colleague being murdered. But I have some good news. We've been assigned our first case together. I mean, it isn't good news for the victim, of course. A Mrs. Elaine Seabrook has been murdered outside her home on Elmwood Avenue. The caller claimed to be her husband. We should head over there right away, Ace. Oh, well. We all know usually when it's the husband. Ooh. Ooh, I like that. That's awesome. Master plan community. So... So I'll start trying to troubleshoot in this weekend and try and figure out what is the matter. If you guys have any help with either OBS, um, Windows 10 tried all different browsers and all of them were just showing white, like it wasn't um, picking up the uh, like it wasn't picking up the actual screen on the uh, on the browser. So, hopefully you guys can help me out with that. Aside from that, I'll probably be putting something up for uh, a new PC. Oh my goodness, Ace. This woman was nailed to her white picket fence. This is one gruesome murder for a fancy suburb like Fairview. Oh, officers, thank goodness you're here. I just arrived home from my morning walk to find a lane like, like this. Oh, Elaine, I can't believe someone would have done this to my beautiful wife. We're sorry for your loss, Mr. Seabrook. Please, step to one side. Secret Agent Ace will want to speak to you in a moment. And Ace, I'll make sure Martine gets started on the autopsy. Did you find anything else? Yeah, good point. That jacket was next to the victim's body, so it must have belonged to her. Bucci. Now that's one expensive brand. Yes, I noticed that too. There's some kind of faded mark on the jacket. Let's get this investigation started by taking a closer look at it, Ace. Yeah, Bucci. I wonder what that's in reference to. And come on, it's always the it's always the husband. He must have been going for a really long walk too, because she didn't just get nailed overnight. A secret agent Ace, I still can't believe it. How could such a thing have happened? This is supposed to be a quiet neighborhood. Do you have any idea who could have done this to your wife, Mr. Seabrook? Well, no, we've only moved in the neighborhood a few months back, and after I got a new job, Lane gave up work to look after things around the house. We hadn't even had time to make friends, let alone enemies. I, I just don't know how I can go on without Elaine. Well, I know this isn't easy, Mr. Seabrook, but if we hope to catch your wife's killer, we're going to have to look inside your home. That's true. That would definitely be helpful. Alright. So as always, once I do this, take a little bit of a break, I'll collect all the stars, I'll come back, power through this. Alright, well this is obviously a clue. Where's the tambourine up there? Okay. Spilled cocktail, broken porcelain. And I also see lipstick and a handbag. Boom. This place sure is nice, Ace. I wonder what house prices are like in the neighborhood. Anyways, right back to business. That college yearbook you picked up shows Elaine when she was younger. Kind of makes me nostalgic for my own university days. It looks like our victim was pretty chummy with this girl, whoever she is. A quick look at the database should allow us to ID her. And there's no doubt this handbag belonged to our victim. A quick rummage through it wouldn't go amiss, Ace. As for these broken pieces of porcelain, I've always been terrible at puzzles, but if you think you can handle it, then go ahead. Alright, so I will see you guys later. It's been Pitching Ace 88. Au revoir. Oh, 
Oh shit. Damn. Hold on a second. Alright folks, Pitching is Idiot, we are back. Uh, more computer troubles, so let's see if we can get through this. To make sure that the audio is actually working after this. Is that a tire track on the victim's jacket, eh? Someone must have driven over it. And considering we found the jacket right next to her lifeless body, I think it's safe to assume that Mark was left by the killer's car. Kathy should be able to identify the model for us. Let's get that jacket to her. Yep. I'm going to be giving a little bit of a break, and I'm going to see if everything worked. See you guys in a little bit. All right, folks, Pitching Against 88, we're back. Um, we're just going to get through this. Uh, I honestly have no idea if this is working or not, so we're just going to go through with it. Uh, my video drivers apparently have crashed. I don't know how to get them back. I'm hoping that I can render this video and get it up today, um, at least Chapter 1. I'll try and work on it when I get home from work, if I have any time. Really wish I had a new computer, but that is not on the cards right now. So we'll just have to try and make do with what we have. But thank you guys for the support. Well, that play reads Cynthia Lane welcomes you to Fairville. View. I suppose Cynthia must be the woman in the picture. Well, I'm not sure what kind of person offers their face on a plate as a welcome gift ace, but I guess we better talk to the Cynthia about her victim. She seems like quite the. Uh, Quite the interesting individual. Well, we got a lot of stars, so we should be able to roll right through this. Boom. Nope, this one. Oh, she's cute. Horrible name, though. So our victim's friend from college is Rosamund Wilcox, 36 years of age. I recognize that name, Miss Wilcox. It's the principal of my son's school. I haven't spoken with Miss Principal Wilcox yet, but I guess that now is my chance to meet her. Nice. Alright, let's do this. Let's say Borleal. What's a piece of paper you found in the victim's bag, Ace? That's a prescription for a victim from the local doctor's practice. This prescription was filled this morning, but the doctor's name is illegible. Here's hoping you can recover it. I'm sure I can. So I'll be looking for you guys to give me uh, feedback in the comments as to whether or not you, know, you can hear it or anything like that. GGI. BBS MX. Oh, it's MD, duh. So, Dr. Gibbs, the victim, this prescription is Dr. Gibbs. Well, the prescription might only be for flu medicine, but if Dr. Gibbs saw the victim right before she was killed, we better go talk to him, I agree. Lane, we'd like to ask you a few questions about your relationship with Elaine Seabrook. We found your uh, plate in her living room. Ah, of course, that's my welcome gift to every new arrival. I'm in charge of all the neighborhood events you see. Bake sales, gardening workshops, you name it, I, re I organize it. It's terribly hard work, but sometimes you just don't, you, know, you just have to sacrifice yourself for the good of the community. Don't you think, secret agent Ace? Anyhow, may I ask what this is all about, officers? I do hope Elaine hasn't gotten herself in any trouble. Eh, you could say that. Elaine Seabrook has been murdered. A murder here in Fairview? How appalling, but to be perfectly honest, I hadn't yet gotten to know Elaine as well as I'd like, so I'm afraid I can't help you. Hmm, doubt it. Doubt it. 
Oh, hello, you must be Carr's mother. How may I help you? Actually, I'm not here about my son. Elaine Seabrook was found murdered this morning. We believe you knew each other. Elaine has been murdered? How terrible. I have to admit, I hadn't seen her in years. We used to be on that cheerleading team together back in college. I heard Elaine had moved back to Fairview a few months back, but I've been so busy with work that anyone who's not a parent has fallen off my radar. Oh, we used to have so much fun together. If only I'd made the effort to get back in touch. You, you had. Don't be lying to me. Don't be lying to me. Don't be lying to me. Two months? Psh, definitely done something. Hey, officers, unless this is urgent, I have three patients in my waiting room who could require my attention, so can we please make it quick? We're here regarding the death of Elaine Seabrook. We understood you were her physician. Mrs. Seabrook is dead? Oh, but I just saw her earlier today. She only had a case of the flu. She can't be dead. Oh, my bad, Dr. Gibbs. I should clarify that Mrs. Seabrook was, in fact, murdered. Oh, thank goodness. I'm sorry, I didn't mean it that way. I didn't know Mrs. Seabrook well, but if there's anything I can do, please don't hesitate to let me know, Secret Agent Ace. I doubt it would have been him. He seemed genuinely shocked. Alright, let's speed some of this stuff up. Hey there, Ace. Nice to see you again. And nice to meet you, Gloria. Thanks, Kathy. Is that baby Sammy? I didn't know you had him in today. Yeah, poor darling's running a fever. Alex was caught up all night with him. I brought him into the office so that his dad could get some rest. And, uh, I'm afraid Sammy threw up all over that jacket you sent me, Ace. Oh, brother. That's the last thing I need on my first day on the job. Oh, don't worry. I already taken pictures of the print when I ran through the database. And I can tell you that the print was made by an SUV tire. Well, we know. So now we know our killer drives an SUV, Ace. Well, they can key their next destination to their GPS. Prison. I like Jones's uh, quips a little bit better. But that's okay. She's new. Well, Ace, I don't want to brag, but this autopsy, I totally nailed it. Jokes aside, one thing clear. For the nails to be this deeply embedded in your victim, the killer had to use a nail gun. A nail gun? Oh, charming. We better keep an eye out for it then. I can also tell you that the first nail was shot into the victim's forehead, killing her instantly. But unfortunately for your killer, they left traces of their peppercorn steak sauce on the nails when they fed them into the nail gun. So our killer eats steak. Well, pardon the pun, but they put their life... They put their future at stake when they decide to take life. Okay, you're getting better. You're getting better. Well, Ace, this is my first case with the Grimsboro PD, and I have to admit that I'm stumped. We learned that the victim moved to Fairview a couple months back with her husband, Aaron. But nobody else seems to have formed a close relationship with her. The victim's neighbor said she hadn't gotten to know Elaine properly yet. Well, the school principal, who knew the victim back in college, hadn't taken the time to reconnect with her. We're short on leads here, Ace. Well, not anymore, you're not. You see, I took a look at that peppercorn steak sauce Martine found on the nails you killed to kill your victim, and I know exactly where your killer ate that steak. Ah, thanks, man. Thanks for helping me out. Alright, guys, I'll see you guys in Chapter 2. This has been Pitching Ace Idiot. Over and out.